it's finally here. It's the new P-Line and it's all different. Well, I think it's all different. The box even is different. The Brompton P-Line is available in Storm Grey and Midnight Black. And obviously the changes are just the colours. No, we're just joking. There's much more to it than that. We have had quite a few comments on our recent videos that Brompton just don't innovate. It appears that they have been doing exactly that in the background with this bicycle, the P-Line. We're going to run through our five key differences and then we're going to run through all of the differences in detail. Number five, the roller wheels. And we don't just mean these roller wheels, we also mean the mudguard roller wheel. That's meant the mudguard has been redesigned and strengthened to make the bicycle roll better. Number four is replacing a little unsung hero called the lower stop disc. No longer a disc. This locks the bicycle in place so it doesn't unfold in two positions when the saddle is fully down and halfway up. Perfect for supermarket shopping. This, in combination with the wheels, allows us to roll the bicycle along when the seat post isn't all the way down. The bike stays locked in this position. And it's easier to roll. Or for maximum foldability, or the smaller size, you can pop your seat post down and lock your frame in place, like normal. Number three, the tyres. On your P-Line, you can now choose the all-new Schwalbe 1 Black or the Continental Contact Urban, like on this bicycle, which really are our current favourite tyres. Both these tyres are almost slick, so they roll well. However, the Continental Contact that we have tried, we find has good grip and good puncture resistance. We haven't tried the Schwalbe 1 Blacks yet. Number two, we have four derailleur gears with one lever on the left hand side. And our number one, the new wheel set. It's all about saving weight. The front wheel, for example, has 20 spokes compared to the normal 28. The spokes themselves are double butted and they're thinner in the middle. It has a new hub and the rim has a different profile, it's thinner. That actually means that you're running different inner tubes. So for you roadies, you'll like it, it has a press to valve. The rear wheel still has 28 spokes, they are double butted. It has a newly designed hub to accommodate the four derailleur gears. Well, we couldn't just leave it at five key things, not after the discussions we've had. For us, the bonus is, it is super light. Although it is a P-Line, everything is designed about making it light. The wheels, the rear triangle, the front forks, the gears, the handlebar grips, everything. It really wants it to be as light as possible. And it, it works, it is. It'll be great for commuting. There are so many changes. So here is a quick teaser. We're going to start at the front of the bicycle and work to the back. The handlebar grips are super light, 130mm lock-on. They're the same grips that were used on the old super light Brompton. These are different from the ones used on the C lines and the A line. The handlebars are available in a low, mid or high. This is a low version. They are the same as used on the black edition bicycles. Our first difference, the gear trigger. It's a four speed gear trigger because it has four speeds. In comparison to the C-Line, which is available as urban utility and explore, or an old language, a two, three, or six speed. The stem is the same as used on standard Bromptons, although it is painted in a special P-Line color. This is storm gray. The headset is aluminium it's super light and it's black. The hinge clamp plate assembly is aluminium. 
They're the same as first seen on the Chapter 3. They are CNC'd aluminium and hollow on the inside. The front carrier block is an option on the P-Line. However, it's the same front carrier block as used on the C-Line Bromptons. The mudguards and the stays have been completely redesigned. They seem to be a more of a continuous curve and feel like slightly thicker plastic. The mudguard stays go on the outside of the mudguard, which I think will make them easier to fit. The flap is also a new design. The brakes, reflector and handlebar catch assembly are all the same as used on a standard Brompton. The forks are titanium. We believe they're the same as those used on the previous Superlight bikes. They are painted black, like on the Chapter 3. The front wheel, wow, it's all new. It has 20 spokes. The spokes are designed to make them more lightweight. They're double butted, which means they're made of three bits of metal. So they're thinner in the middle and thicker at either end. So you've got additional strength. The profile of the rim is different. It's more aero. They are thinner and deeper. Because of the thinner profile of the rim, we have a Presta rather than a Schrader valve. It looks to us like it's the SV4 inner tube from Schwalbe. The hub and axle are redesigned. To save weight, it is hollow and it has a bolt through axle, which is undone using an Allen key. As we said before, you have a choice of tyres. The Schwalbe one blacks or the Continental Contact Urbans. The mainframe is the same as used on a standard Brompton, apart from its painted a P-line colour. It does also have a chain catcher stuck on the down tube. They are really commonly found on mountain bikes and Tour de France bikes. The crank set is the same as used on a standard Brompton. However, the chain is different it has hollow pins to save weight. It's a YBN chain, 10 speed, and assuming we counted it correctly, has 102 links. It has a master link, which can be reused up to five times when using master link pliers. The P-Line has a saddle specifically designed for Brompton. It is super light. It also has a new pentaclip that is also lightweight. It's compatible with both these saddle rails and with carbon saddle rails, with the longer lips being used for the carbon saddle rails. You should do the pentaclip up using a 7mm Allen key to 10 newton meters. The front of the saddle has a rubberized handhold. The back of the saddle has a mounting point for the cat eye rear Brompton light. The saddle is noticeably lighter than a standard Brompton saddle and pentaclip, so we thought would weigh them. Standard saddle and pentaclip, 487 gram. The P-Line saddle and pentaclip, 376 grams. The seat post is the same as used on a standard Brompton, or a black edition. It's black. The whole back end of this Brompton is new. This Brompton has a new bottom. I think it's easier to say what's the same. The brake caliper and the reflector, but not the bracket. The rear frame release is also CNC'd aluminium, as is the seat post lever. The rear triangle is titanium, but don't be confused thinking it's the same rear triangle as used on the previous Superlights. It's been completely redesigned. As with previous titanium rear triangles, it doesn't have a pump fitted on it, but the new pump will fit. We have turned the bicycle around so you can see the next difference. It is on the rear frame hinge spindle. The outside and the bushings look slightly different to us, but most of it's hiding inside the bicycle. The cable guide is no longer raised on the rear frame. It's part of the lower stop device, which replaces the lower stop disc, which keeps your bicycle folded when it's locked in place. The thing you probably noticed that's different is the new Easy Wheels. They are bigger. The frame is fatter behind it. And hiding behind there is the new suspension block. 
the suspension block is not round anymore. It has been tuned to maximise the efficiency of your pedalling. As we said before, the reflector bracket is different. Instead of a small bit of metal, it's a large bit of plastic. As with the front, the mudguard has been completely redesigned. It has new stays and has a new roller wheel. The mudguard roller wheel looks much more robust than on the standard Bromptons. We think it will roll much better without the need, for example, for a rack. As with the front, the rear wheel has been completely redesigned. It does have 28 spokes. They are double butted. The axle is wider and like the front, does up using Allen keys rather than bolts. The hub has been designed for Brompton, specifically for the four derailleur gears. The sprockets are 11, 13, 15 and 18, giving 163% gearing. Similar ratios to the three-speed bicycle and 60% more than the two-speed. And the wheel has been designed with the aim of being light. The chain tensioner is attached to the bicycle using a derailleur hanger. The sprocket here is attached to the rear of the frame. So unlike a normal derailleur, they're in two parts. The derailleur system was designed in-house by Brompton and it has a patent pending on it. So this is like the old chain tensioner and this is like the chain pusher, but it has a sprocket built into it. As this sprocket moves, the chain tensioner is free to move. Once we get our own one, we'll do another video on how to set up your gears, hopefully better than this one. According to Brompton, it weighs in at 9.96 kilos. I can confirm it really is quite light. Nine point eight seven kilograms. If you like this video about the P line Brompton, we'd really like it if you gave us a big thumbs up. If you'd like to see more of our videos, including me taking a P line for a ride, we'd love it if you subscribed. Did we miss anything about this awesome Brompton P line? Please comment in the comment section below. Number four. Oh, I've forgotten. This allows us to have a dual locking mechan mechanism. Mechanism. Mm. Oh. The rim. Obviously, you need to have your gear set up. <laughs> Bicycle, Brompton. <gasps> there are so many changes. So, we're going to run through a quick teaser. To save weight, it's hollow, and the bolt through, and it, oh, no, I'm not going to say super light, sorry, can I start again? And the back of the saddle has a, oh, it's half unfolded, no, it's not half unfolded. Oh.